Yogi. <laughs> so let's uh, get started right away. So I'm going to, I, what I have here is chipped beef. This means that at the grocery store, they already cut it into really thin slices. And I just bought it that way. And you can do that too. Other than, other than that, you can just slice it up really thinly yourself. So we're going to start out by marinating this. So we're going to start out by putting in our liquid ingredients first. And this does take a lot of herbs and spices. So uh, hopefully you'll learn a lot about some of these spices and herbs here, mainly spices though. So one tablespoon of dry sherry. If you can't use dry sherry at your house or school or whatever, you can use beef, um, beef broth, okay? We're also gonna put in there toasted sesame oil, one tablespoon of that, okay? So just uh, put that right in there, one tablespoon. Okay, and then we're also going to put in there five tablespoons of soy sauce, okay? So I'm just gonna measure this one out uh, using a different measurement. So um, I'm just gonna be using this, so measure out five tablespoons of soy sauce. And you can get the sodium-free one or you can also get reduced sodium if you want to, you know, take out some of the saltiness of this. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a healthy dose of salt because <laughs> soy sauce has a ton of sodium in it. So if you're trying to cut back on salt, this would be something that you would take out of your diet. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to put in a teaspoon of baking soda okay and baking soda in this dish is actually used to tenderize the meat okay it actually causes it to become you know fairly soft okay so that's what we're that's why we're putting that in there then we're going to put in a tablespoon of cornstarch now this helps with the caramelization of the actual meat okay when you're actually cooking it or stir frying it so one tablespoon of cornstarch, it thickens the sauce and then uh, causes caramelization to happen on the actual meat. So that's the reason why we're putting cornstarch in here too. So I'm just kind of mixing things in here as we go. And then we're going to put in a whole bunch of different herbs and herbs and spices and flavorings here. So I'm gonna put in um, a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. Okay, so um, let me put this in here like so. My brown sugar is all dried out basically, but it, when you put it in liquid, it rehydrates really fast. So, so let's put a fourth of a cup of brown sugar in here. This is a great way to use it up because you can't use it in cookies usually. Okay, there we go, just a little bit more there. I like the sweetness in there a lot uh, in this beef bulgogi from Korea. <laughs> uh, let me mix this in a bit, this brown sugar. It's in clumps and stuff like that. So there we go. There we go. Just get that all mixed in there like so. Okay, set that aside. So now we're going to mix in some other things. We're going to do a fourth of a cup of spring onions, green onions, or scallions, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to do a little bit extra because I want some for my garnish as well. So these are all rolly here. So use your knife skills, slice thinly so they can kind of mesh in with the actual meat. Okay. So, um, if you're asking me what kind of meat um, I use, you can use um, sirloin, beef sirloin, uh, loins, and you can also use flank steak, which is more expensive. So yeah, it, whatever you have on hand, just not super, super cheap meat, okay? Okay, getting there here. All right, so let's measure out a fourth of a cup here of green onions or scallions. Okay, let's put them in here like so. There we go. So that goes in there. We're going to mix that in. 
And we can use all of these other things here as uh, our topping or our garnish later on. So we can get out a container here to put those in. Here we go. Let's get these for our garnish. All righty. And then we're going to be doing some garlic. We need two tablespoons of garlic, so that's quite a bit but it's gonna flavor the meat and give it a great flavor. Plus, you know, garlic is like a superfood. It's very, very good for you. It'll kill bacteria on contact. If you put it in a Petri dish with any type of bacteria, virus, or anything like that, it's uh, pretty amazing. Um, and in fact, when I, if I get a cold, sometimes I just take a little bit of garlic, chew it up, which is gross. It's very, very strong and you're gonna smell like garlic and that's why people don't do it you know but um, garlic really really kills the bacteria in my throat if I have a sore throat or something like that it's gone within a couple hours it's amazing um, that's the medicinal value of garlic that's why you can buy garlic tablets for supplements and things like that and uh, very like I said healthy for you but the real stuff the actual garlic cloves are better for you. It's just that people don't like to eat a garlic clove because it's like really, really pungent, right? And the flavor of garlic is, is you know, stays in your breath for quite a long time, actually. So, and some people don't like that. But the more pungent a vegetable is, the more strong flavored something is or strong smelling something is, the better it is for you better it is for your body, your brain, and every aspect of your life, right? So that's why it really is. Here, let's put two tablespoons of garlic in here, okay? So I had, I used like about five cloves of garlic, basically, is what I did, okay? And that makes about two tablespoons of minced garlic, okay? And then we're going for one tablespoon of minced ginger now and i wanted to show you a technique oh, that's probably dirty so i'll just use this um what you do is you take the back of a spoon or the side of a spoon and you just take off the skin this way and it takes the uh, exposes the flesh you can't use a um, peeler because it takes off too much of this you know this just takes off the very very surface of the skin of the ginger so it makes, whoa, did you see that? It flipped right out of my hand there. And I just have to make sure that I clean up all the skin because the skin is a little bit tough, so you don't want to put that into your dish, okay? Uh, so we're almost there here. So about an inch of ginger will produce about a tablespoon of ginger, fresh ginger. If you want to, you could use... Uh, regular you know like dried ginger you know powdered ginger that you uh looks like in one of these here you know and in fact uh, this is ground ginger right here i could use this if i wanted to and so if it's a tablespoon you're going to have to use about a half a tablespoon which is a lot of ginger but uh, you use half of the amount okay so just run your knife through here quickly Getting all this ginger minced up uh, awesomely here. Just run your knife through with our mincing skills. I like using fresh ginger, but again, if you don't have it, you know, and don't want to go to the grocery store and make an extra trip, you know, you can just buy powder. You can just use powdered ginger. Always have it on hand, basically. I always have mine on hand. Oh, I'm making a noise there that I don't like. There we go. Okay, so our ginger goes in here. One tablespoon of ginger. I didn't measure it out, but, you know, approximately. It's about that much. Use your approximation skills, okay? <laughs> now, uh, moving right along. We're going to put in a half of a teaspoon of ground cloves. And this gives it a great flavor, okay? This gives it that bulgogi flavor. It's kind of like the five, five spice Chinese spice is what we're doing right now, putting in all those 
different types of spices here. Now I have a teaspoon of fennel seed that I have already crushed up actually. So you're gonna crush it up using like a mortar and pestle, okay? So a teaspoon of that goes in there. And then after that, so that gives it a really a licorice sort of a flavor, it's amazing, okay? And then we're also going to put in there some allspice, okay? And so a half of a teaspoon of allspice. All right, that goes in there, like so. And then we're gonna do a half of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and this gives it a little bit of heat pop, you know? Um, if you don't, you can put more in there if you want more heat. Then I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of toasted sesame seeds. And those go in there right like that as well, okay? And let me see, let me make sure that I got everything. And yes, I have, so that's good. So just take this and mix this together. You know, and then we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and we're gonna actually let this marinate for two hours. After it has marinated for two hours, then we're going to pan fry it, stir fry it onto the stove top. So I'll see you back here in two hours. Well, I've gotten all of the beef bulgogi out of the refrigerator from marinating and it's time to stir fry it up. So. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half, tablespoon in here of some oil. And then I'm gonna to start to sizzle in the beef bulgogi that has marinated here. So let's just toss it in here a little bit at a time. My rice going over here too, so break it up into the pan. Kind of all stuck together right now. It's still pretty cold out of the refrigerator. So we're making sure that all of the paint disappears, you know. So, what we're going for, and what we're going for caramelization to happen on the meat. It turns like this bright, dark brown when that happens. So, I have all this still in here as well. So, we out of the pan there. <laughs> Just keep mashing it down here. Stir frying it around the pan here. <laughs> I keep flying things out of the pan. <laughs> I'm pretty vigorous in my stirring, so. Whoa, that one went out of there as well. Goodness. <laughs> In a wonderful mess that it does clean up pretty pretty easily. We're almost there, only about a minute more. Doesn't take very long to stir fry all of this beef here. <laughs> All these little bits of shaved beef, very quickly. I'm just going to kind of let it sit there for a minute. I'm going to stir fry up a bit. There we go. See how it nicely caramelizes here. Uh, I'm about seven on the dial here, so medium high is what you go for. Okay, I still have a little bit of paint, so I'm 
trying to get that out of there. Almost there. You can see all the dark caramelization that's happening. That's, that's basically what you want there on the meat. You don't want to burn it. You definitely want those dark bits on there. That makes it taste so good. <laughs> Okay, so we're almost there. Almost there. And it's time. Here we go. <laughs> it's already going here. Okay, so we're just going to scoop up some rice and put it right into our bowl here. A nice little pile. Okay, and then we're just going to dish up this beef bulgogi right on top here. Look at that, how nice this looks. Ooh, look at that. Woo. And then we're going to put a little bit of green onions on here and some sesame seeds. And there we go. Beef bulgogi <laughs> from Korea. Got to try it sometime. So let's try this real quick and then we'll call it a show. <laughs> I'll want to see you next time I come on. So let's try this. All right. So, oh man, man, man. Woo. See the stain coming off of that. Mmm. Mmm. The nice soy sauce in there. And the strength of the ginger and the allspice and bringing in the cloves and the fennel seed with the licorice flavor makes this fantastic. You've got to try it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and give the thumbs up and share this with your friends and I'll see you next week.